In this video, we're going to switch from split validation to cross validation in Rapid Miner. So let's see how we do that. I've got a process set up right here with bike buyers. So I've called it bike buyers cross validation. And you can see we've done some things in the past with automated uh, feature engineering. We've applied our feature set. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring cross validation in here. And you can see I've got under validation below all the other folders. Uh, well, both the other folders. I've got cross validation. So I drag that in and it allows me to set the number of folds. And by default, we go with 10 and that's kind of considered the gold standard for cross validation, 10 folds and automatic sampling. That'll be fine for us. We can do stratified or other types of sampling if needed. And I'm going to use my random number seed here. And of course I would uh, also add a note to document what I'm doing. All right, let's go ahead and take a look inside the cross validation. So I've done my automated feature engineering. I'm applying the feature set and I'm taking that new reduced set of features and actually my newly generated features into cross validation. So now I'm just using a decision tree. I'm going with gain ratio, maximal depth of 10, basically the um, uh, more or less the standard parameters. I'm, I may have uh, adjusted a couple of them. And then in cross validation, I want to remember the weights. So these weights won't go through if I try and remember them this way, uh, like I had in the split validation. So what I'll do instead is I'll take that weight and I'm going to use a remember operator. And I'll say, okay, remember my model weights. And I can name this whatever I want. I could just say if I wanted to remember Joe, but I do have to tell it what it is that I want it to remember. And in this case, there's a long list of different things that you can have uh, Rapid Miner remember. And we're, I'm just telling it to remember the attribute weights. And if I can find it again, there we go. And I will recall it later on. Okay, so the other side of the cross validation looks pretty familiar. We apply the model on this side where we test. We are going to bring in a performance because this is a binomial label. I can bring in my binomial classification performance operator, and then I can choose which criteria I want it to focus on. So I could tell it to focus on accuracy. I could say, let's try for the highest AUC I can get. So that's another uh, thing you can do is uh, what's my main criterion that I am worried about. And then in this case, I am going, if I just connect the performance to the performance output port for cross validation, I just get my ending performance measures. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to add our performance to data. And if I go in and look at my performance, you'll find there's a performance to data operator. I just drag that in here and there's nothing to display. I'm just going to connect performance in here and then I'll take performance and connect it out just like I normally would. But I'm going to also take these examples and send them out this port here. All right. So now I'm going to go back up to my main process and you can see I have uh, connected my model, my outgoing examples, my test output port, and my performance output port to the uh, results wall. And then I'm also going to recall those model weights I created earlier. Now, one thing that you may find is when you set something up like this with an operator floating out here and try to run it, you may get an error message that says, hey, I don't have this value available. When that's, but you know for sure that you created it in this sub process. So when that happens, you can use a little trick. If you go to the process menu up here in the uh, main menu for Rapid Miner, and you say change the operator order, 
you'll see you get a little flow of which order the operators are going to run in and then you can click each one and change it. So I'm going to move this forward and now this is first, second, third, fourth, fifth. And so that is something that you can do to, of course, now I'm going to have to reset all these, but uh, this is a way that you can make sure that the operators work in the exact order you want them to, regardless of how you have them connected. Of course, the only reason you would want to do this is if you have an unconnected operator like this that you want to run at a particular time. Okay. So with that, I'm going to turn off my operator order and run my process. And we'll see what we get. Okay, my process is done running and I can see this is it's generating sort of a real time fitting graph as it goes. Okay, so if I look at my output, I can see the output of my attribute analysis and see that children, uh, the absolute value of cars, occupation, region, commute distance. Okay, so now I can see my overall performance just like I have before. I just selected accuracy, AUC, and F measure as my output. So accuracy now I see is about 70%. AUC, I've got 0.742, F measure, 67.24%. Now that I'm running cross-validation, I also see a plus minus after each of these measures. What that means is when I ran my cross-validation, I created 10 different models and then averaged them all together to come up with my overall model. So my overall model performs with this 70.10% accuracy. And then if I look at each of my individual runs, of the cross-validation runs, there's a standard deviation of 4.65% in each individual, in all 10 runs. The distribution of accuracy across those runs gives us a standard deviation of 4.65%. And the same with AUC of very small 0.061 standard deviation and with F measure 4.2% standard deviation. Now, if I look at this example set right next door, I can see each measure for each run. So I've got 30 results here for one for each of the measures for each of the 10 folds in our cross validation run. So one of the nice things I can do now is I can visualize what we just saw here with my plus minus and take a look at this and I've just created a bar chart with my x-axis as my criterion and the y-axis uh, or the value axis is the values for each criterion. So if I look at accuracy, I can see the variation in accuracy from run to run. I can see the variation of AUC from run to run and visualize that standard deviation that we just saw on the previous measure. All right, so with cross-validation, this is an important thing to look at is how your performance varies from fold to fold. The more steady your performance is, the better your cross-validation model is. All right, so this is actually not too bad. And we can move ahead. And of course, I've got my new feature set here ready to go. And let's see, I think, uh, let's see. So I recalled my attribute weights. Okay, that was the first thing we looked at. And I've taken a look. Oh, I can also take a look at the model itself. So let's take a look at the model. Where did it go? Yeah, here we go. So here's my decision tree that was created. All right. So cross-validation, basically way more powerful than just a standard split validation, uh, considered the best approach for data mining uh, today. So let's get back and see what we'd like to do next.